Yeah. They're almost almost cool. Put it, cool. Yeah, put it fast this morning. No, that's perfect. Yeah, it looks like the sun's yeah. kind of yeah. bouncing off. Ben and the crew are here filming on the Rhodes video project, Rooted, and they drove all the way out here. Our living room is looking like a studio. It's a beautiful sunny day outside. It's actually not a sunny day. It's actually, we got some lights going on here. Are you enjoying filming in here? All right, come on, let's go. It's not filming, it's my picture. You taking pictures in the studio? You should. Yeah. Hope you guys well. Thanks. Let me know. I'll text you. When you want me. Go. <laughs> We've actually got a slammed busy day. We're showing up doing chores, plus more. The kids are cleaning out this area of the barn right here. I'm gonna come help them so that we can get hay because we got a bunch of bales coming today. All right, that looks good. Thanks. the box. Lengthy negotiations with kids on putting hay in this space because I've kind of said this can be your play fort for a while so they don't want hay in here unless it's a hay fort so we're gonna try to we're figuring that out right now. I found something really concerning this morning right here. Uh, it's a broken goose egg which it makes me worried I'm gonna go check on their nest. We did have a goose egg disappear before I think a dog must have taken it out of there because I found bits of it way up the hill later. These all look okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So I don't know what happened. It's possible something carried out of the nest, but they didn't break any in the nest. It's also possible the geese got sloppy and actually laid an egg in the yard and it got broken out there. Ooh. And if I protect that nest, if I cover the nest, then the goose will be locked in there and she can't go out and eat. Grace is trying to get the cows separated out so she can help to train the calf. So we came to an agreement on the shed. We're gonna put the bales in the back half and then I'll actually help them one day build a fort and we'll move it to the front. We'll build a tunnel and stuff that's safe and that it's a compromise. I want them to be safe. I don't want the bales to be busted. They want a fort. So, yeah. We're going to try to work together on it. And I'm trying to remedy a mistake I made last time putting hand here by putting plastic down. We had a bunch of moldy bales that were sitting on the ground. See, it busted. It didn't hold together. So the lower side has mold in about the lower two inches here. It's pretty dry in here, really. But there was enough moisture that they absorbed the moisture molded, the hay strings rotted, it was a mess. All right, here we go. Yep, all the layers. Straight okay, line. I'm trying to get... Ocean rain! A little bit better. All right, good job, guys. We need to go up to the house to get Grace started on her class. Let's go guys, right now. All right, Bree's done. I'm jumping in down here. Yeah, that'll work. <clears throat> we're talking about work ethics. We're also talking about permaculture. So maybe we'll kind of start maybe talking about just, just in the impacts they have had on y'all and, and the work that y'all do. You know, when we, moved in across the street from the roads some years back. I, one of the most impactful things that I saw was Justin working across the street. Um, he's always been one of the hardest workers I know, but I saw it, like honestly very few people have seen while we were living there. And I just remember every morning he would be out before I was out and he would be out with all of his kids, um, including his youngest, who I think at the time was like one or two and was actually in a baby carrier. So sometimes he had a baby carrier, a stroller, and he was out doing all the chores, like to the back of the pasture. <clears throat> and I just remember seeing that and honestly saying like, I don't know anyone who does that. I don't know anyone who works that hard 
but it doesn't just work that hard at their job, but like their whole life, from his kids to, to everything else. Do you know when the release date of episode two and three are? We're thinking, actually I have this written down on a calendar somewhere. I think it's gonna be end of this month, for okay. episode two. Episode three will probably be third or fourth week of, uh, so is that April? Yeah. April, yep. Okay, awesome. So that's probably the, where we'll see you is uh, in, uh, in April. Sounds great. Brianna ran in here in the middle of our shoot and she said, there's a disaster in the car, she interrupted. She, anyway, she was gonna take the kids down the hill and I said, there's probably a kid bringing eggs. Is that what happened? Turns out you were right. So you can get some cleaner and go check it out. Some cleaner? Yeah. Is that all on the paper towels maybe? And spray. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I haven't heard from the hay lady, so I'm assuming she's still coming at noon. How'd your interview go? It was fun. Really? It's hard to talk for an hour straight without having conversation. Yeah, I only talked for 30 minutes. Well, I guess I just have more to say than you do. No, I think they were filming me for two different ones. Oh. Yeah. Were they? No. Yeah. Yes. For episode the the birth one. Oh, okay. And then the episode three. Hey, look, the sun's out, Brianna. Yay! It really looks like the sun is shining, though. Like if you look right here, I keep thinking like, oh, the sun came out. It's gonna be a nice day, and then I realize it's their light. That's crazy. This is how crazy busy things are. Literally done with the shoot. The guys are leaving and our hay is here. Run down the hill, help unload this hay, get it in the right barns. That's not the end of the day though, there's more. got our own studio quality sound in here with the hay it makes it really nice and not echoey we got our hay in the barn and it looks good we found pretty much living in the mountains here that the best hay at the best price is either all the way from Tennessee or from South Carolina because there's actually flat land there or you could go down you know other way out of the mountains in North Carolina up here there's so little pasture land and hay fields you know compared to the overall land it's mostly woods so even with delivery it ends up being cheaper coming from Tennessee or South Carolina all right get out of my seat so I can drive you up there were you sleeping I was sleeping <laughs> I caught you sleeping you never take midday naps I caught you napping I only I just so rarely nap even when I'm pregnant but this pregnancy I could nap every day if I let myself. I can actually smell that hay on you guys. It smells like good hay. That's because I was climbing over it. Yeah, I can smell it. It has that sweet, good hay good smell. Hay. It's good. Yeah, she said it was second and third cutting, which is I what said we it, want. I told me you could charge more. Don't tell people they can charge us more. Arthur. I know, I told him. I was like, this isn't a bad, this isn't a good business decision on my hand, but I'm gonna tell you how much hay costs up here, just so you know. He can sell to us at a great price because we are so upfront and honest with him. He can sell to other people at a higher price. Yeah, the next time we buy from him next year is gonna be He's gonna say, it's, yeah, it's almost twice as much, I'm sorry. <laughs> Real farmers, people, old time farmers, they all work full time jobs and they work full time on the farm. That's what everyone does, that's what he does. He drives a truck, he's cutting thousands of bales of hay. You still don't need to tell him to charge us more. <laughs> hay's already really expensive. <laughs> he can figure that out. But he may not be able to charge more because he we're actually getting this hay from a different state. I was telling him he could drive up here and sell it for more. If he could get yeah. advertise up here more yeah. and sell more up here. Anyway. Oops. Well, hey. 45 minutes. It's going to be great. You going to get me my dream food? I am. <laughs> Just wait until you guys see what this is. It's awesome. <laughs> get in the car. Okay, here's my instruction sheet. Please make sure extra sour cream on nachos, house-made ranch, extra. This is my favorite part. 
That is a note from a pregnant woman who has a special craving, and I haven't even told you what the main thing is that she wanted. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. What's in here? That's it. That's what she wanted. It is fried pickles. Fried pickles. We know what we have. Let's hold on tight. Found what we're looking for in life. Call us crazy, but things are finally right. We might need to warm these up. Now that's a fried pickle, but we need to put them in the oven and crisp them back up. This is the thing I have been craving. Fried pickles. I just can't make them like this. This restaurant, this restaurant is so good. Have you or your lady had funny pregnancy food cravings? I'd love to hear about them. Put them in the comments of this video. I've got some more stories, but the fried pickles, multiple fried pickle trips in two days. <laughs> oh, did you tops tell it. about that? Anyway, I had a Zoom meeting in the middle of it too. I, I left on time to go straight there, pick them up, and bring them straight home and do my Zoom meeting. I got to the restaurant and the food wasn't ready. She, Brianna had ordered it a long time before, so I was pretty, I was calm about it, but I left. I'm gonna miss this meeting. It was a 30 minute Zoom meeting. I will completely miss it. I did the Zoom meeting in a park and then went straight back to the restaurant. Ugh, I was stressed. Because the pressure, the pickle pressure. Pickle pressure. I didn't want to miss the Zoom meeting, but even more importantly, I didn't want to let you down with your pickles. <laughs> well, yesterday was a big bummer, but it wasn't your fault. This looks good. What do I do with that? Where's Brighton? If you use this is your spot. Thanks. Grace and I are driving down the hill. Everything got really late, but we definitely don't want to neglect this trip. And we could neglect this trip except for one thing, because I gave the cows hay, I think midday. Oh, I'm sorry, you checked Moonlight's ligaments earlier. Moonbeam was the little Nubian. And you said you couldn't feel them. So we could be in store for baby goats really, really soon. I can actually feel them a little bit, yeah. but they're almost gone. And she doesn't look like she's in labor right now, but we'll get them some nice clean hay. Oh, sorry, Ghost, you got the bad bill. Yeah, they don't mind. The cows need water. <laughs> the geese are mad that we're even here at all. I think those are both females on that nest, Grace. They're both getting on it? I think they are. I don't think, because the males are doing their thing over there. The males are like all out there. Or maybe that's the main male watching. Could be, yeah. It could be. It's hard to say. So the goats look good. Nothing much happening down there. We put down fresh hay so we'll have a clean place to lay their babies. We'll see you tomorrow. Come back and join us. All right, goodbye.